Hi, this is Debbie with Book and Bujo, and I am continuing with my Magical Readathon and Romathon books. And a surprising one, which is not a book on my TBR because I got all crazy and started going through all the quests. So this is actually a book for the quest, one of the quests from the Magical Readathon. But I'm reading the com it's Convenient Store Woman. And I basically picked it up because I had to read a contemporary and it was only like three and a half hours for the audiobook. But I am loving it. It is so just, I don't know, it's just so strange. So basically we're following a woman who doesn't conform to normal standards of what most people think of when they think of just a normal person like you want to get married, have kids, you think normally like you see an animal that's passed away and you're just sad and you want to cry. Um, this is not how this woman reacts to normal situations. So it's just really interesting. So you're following her from a girl all the way on up until she's older. And <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm loving it. It's not like it's the most amazingly written book or the most amazing storyline basically we're just following someone who works at a convenience store and has no other real life beyond the convenience store but for some reason i am loving it it is just quirky and interesting and i can't get enough so i'm going to i have about 20 percent left of the book to read so i'm going to finish listening to that while i uh put my groceries away and who knows, maybe I'll show you one or two of my groceries while I'm at it. Catch you in a bit. All right, so I did stop by the library today on my way um, to do some grocery shopping and I returned a couple of the books I had. So I had Burnout, which I finished, and I also just finished The Red Squirrels of Magic by Cassandra Clare, that was great. Although the reading order that we did it for the Shadowhunter readathon I thought was a little weird because the, the Red Squirrels of Magic, everything that's happening in that is kind of before the Dark Artifices series and we ended up reading it after which is kind of weird. I think I would have read it before, but I, I, I'm sure it's to break up the short story type of books, the ones that aren't, don't need to be read necessarily to understand the whole series. But I think I would have preferred to have read it before The Dark Artifices because everything takes place before that. But anyway, so I went in, into the library looking to see if they had Midnight Tides by Stephen Erickson, which is the next book in the Malazan Relong that I'm doing but sadly they didn't. They only have four or five of the books and um, three of them I've already read and the other two are like at the end of the series. So no luck there, but I was able to get The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan, which is the one I need to read this month. Um, I do have the audiobook, but it is nice to have the physical book to be able to read along with the audiobook. So I did get that one. And then I realized, you know, when you get something at the store, and you're like, oh great, awesome, I needed that. And then you get it home, you're like, hmm, that's not the right one. <laughs> so my husband likes the sausage links and I ended up getting, getting the patties. But that's all right, they're still good. Still the same stuff, just a different format. And another thing I got, so we have a little uh, bakery here, which is amazing. The most delicious, let me just pull one out. The most delicious pan of chocolate. Ever. Mm, they are so good, all filled with chocolatey goodness. Mm, you just heat it up just to, for a couple seconds and oh, so good. One of my favorite things. But anyway, there at their store, uh, the bakery, you can get these chips. I had never really heard of them before. They're the Taurus brand, but this one is the black truffle and it is amazing. So good. And this bakery also has um, breakfasts and lunches and they have this pastrami sandwich and these chips go so good with that sandwich. Mm. So good. So if you are ever in the Northern Arizona in the Prescott area and you need a really good lunch or some really good sourdough bread or some, a nice little treat like a pan au chocolat or one of their scones, 
uh, Pangea ba Bakery is the place to go. Let's see what else did I get. Got some onion rings, which are fun. We do burger night every Sunday. And I am a dairy free girl, so got myself some BioLife uh, cheeses, which are delicious. The provolone is my favorite, but the cheddar shreds are also very yummy. Um, what else did we get? Mm, cherry tomatoes, some sprouts to make some cucumber sandwiches. So good. I uh, got my hubby some eggs. I'm also an egg free girl because allergies suck, but that's all right. Some artichokes. Um, we got some leafy greens and tomato. We got some bok choy. Um, I got myself a grapefruit. They're out of romaine again, but you know, you do what you gotta do. And we got some butter lettuce instead. Oh, one of the other treats I love to get myself is these uh, samosa potato and peas. Oh, so good. They have like this um, tamarind mint chutney that comes with it. It has, oh, it has a kick to it. It's kind of spicy. These are so good. And uh, kind of my Monday treat for lunch is to get some samosas. Not every week because that gets boring, but a lot of the time. Um, and if you haven't tried it, too. A couple of my favorite, other favorite things are these CFA chips. So I have a bunch of food allergies, so I always have to try and find interesting other things that I can eat. Um, but I can have these uh, Serrano Season Sea Salt and Vinegar Chips by CFA. These are so good. Oh my goodness. Um, and then a new find is these Thunderbird Bars, which I don't know if you've ever seen these or not. But they had the chocolate almond butter sea salt. They also have like a, a carrot cake type one with carrots and figs, I think. They have a hazelnut coffee, I think. And then they have one other one. Um, but this is the only one I've actually tried before. I, I have a couple of the others. I just haven't eaten it yet. And oh, it was really good. I had it yesterday. So yummy. But my most favorite thing ever. And if they ever want to sponsor me, I'm here for it. So uh, Hugh Chocolate, I love your stuff. So good, one of my favorite things ever. So I am a chocoholic. I, there it is, it's out there. I'm a chocoholic, but this, uh, the cashew raspberry dark chocolate is amazing. It is so good, so good. So basically it's just filled with cashew butter and raspberries that they kind of mix together. So think of like a peanut butter cup-esque type of treat. Um, but it's like a chocolate bar and it's just filled with this cashew butter and raspberry filling. Mm, so good. Has a little bit of tartness, a little bit of sweetness, a little, yeah, mm, a little bitter from the dark chocolate. Oh, so good. They have a ton of other flavors. I like their salty one because sea salt and chocolate is really good. They have a simple one, which is just plain chocolate. They have, they have a ton of them. They also had, they had them on sale, so I got a couple. But they also had a cashew butter with uh, vanilla bean. They have one with orange. They have almond butter ones as well, not just the cashew butter. But those are some of my favorite things. Um, also got some of these uh, seed and nut flour sweet thins, which would be kind of fun. And uh, yeah, a treat that doesn't involve chocolate. <laughs> what else we got here? Got some peanut butter, a little bit of refried beans because I love me some burritos. Got my dog, some treats as well. A little bit of granola, some barbecue sauce that we're out of. Oh, my other favorite thing ever is these, um, they're white sweet potatoes. So basically they're, they're jerseys, I think they're called, jersey sweet potatoes, but they're white on the inside. Um, but they taste, they have, they're, they are sweet potato that kind of work a little bit more like a regular potato. They don't get quite so squishy and super sweet like the orange uh, sweet potatoes can get. They can get way too sweet for me. But yeah, these ones are delicious. And then the other ones I like to get, oh, I also got myself a nice big grapefruit because I love grapefruit. I like to just peel it and eat it like an orange. It's so good. And let's see, oh, here's the other ones. These are the Japanese sweet potatoes, but they're purple on the outside, but they're white on the inside. So again, more taste a little bit more like a potato. Still not quite as fluffy as like regular potato beans, but oh, it's okay. Let them. All right, well, I'm going to finish putting my spring mix and other good goodies away, and 
I'll see you back in a little bit after I finish conven Convenience Store Woman. Today is Tuesday and I'm continuing with my Magical Readathon and Rabathon reads and I am still working on Master of Jinn. I'm also listening to the audiobook for Midnight Tides which I started yesterday evening <clears throat> and then because I just finished Convenience Store Woman which loved it and then on my Kindle I am continuing to read Quiet Thunder. That one I'm about almost halfway through. Um, Midnight Tides, I'm maybe 5% through, if that. I mean, it's like a thousand pages long, so it's going to take me a while. Or 900 something. This one, I'm getting close. I am about halfway. Let's go this way. You can see a little better. About just over halfway. Barely. Maybe 52% or so. But I am loving this one, and I... And more, I'm not even done and I'm ready to get into the next book. So I'm going to keep on reading. Oh, I also totally forgot. So I have two different um, characters for the Magical Readathon. And so I got, it's so sweet. She handwrites on every one of her envelopes. But I got two bookmarks from G at Book Roast from her Etsy shop, and I will try and link that below. But my first character is Ariel, and she is part of the Order of the Crescent. Oh, look how shiny that is. So nice, so shiny. So that's the Order of the Crescent. I love the moons. We got the wolf on the bottom, it's so pretty. And then my other character, Karasu, is part of the Archivists. And so this one, you've got a chalice and a feather up at the top. I am using these for my books for the Magical Readathon, which I actually ended up with four physical books this time, so that's really cool. But right now I'm reading a book for Ariel, and so I'm using my Ariel bookmark, and that's a Master of Gin. So let's keep reading. What is that one for? So I'm reading a Master of Gin, which is for a uh, conjuration for Ariel's class. So let's keep reading. Oh, I got to chapter 18. I tend to read my physical books when I eat my breakfast and lunch, and then I read my ebooks in the evening and at random times during the day when I can catch a moment here and there, and audiobooks the rest of the time while I'm cleaning, food prep, doing whatever else around the house. So, yeah, I'm really liking this one so far. But to give you an update where I am so far on my magical readathon, let's take a look at the handy dandy reading journal. All right, for Ariel, it's hard to see your face in that in that picture. So Ariel had to read six, take six different classes, and I have gotten through four and a half of the book so far. So once I finish A Master of Gin, which I should finish probably by the end of the week, um, I will only have one class left and that's shape-shifting and I'm reading Wolf Spirit for that and that one's only like 34 pages. So I should be able to finish up that the Master of Elements course fairly quickly, hopefully by the end of the week. 
And then Ariel also is trying to be a Feywild cartographer. And for this one, she has seven classes to take and has gotten through three and a half so far and has three more. And one's an audiobook, the other two are both ebooks, but they're both under 200 pages. So those should be fairly easy to get through. So I should be able to get through those by the end of next week. I've actually done um, a couple of the quests so far. I've, I've read six extra books already. <laughs> um, one of them was 85 pages, one was under 300, one was 315, one was like 152. It was a graphic novel, so Red Saga, Volume 3. Um, had a 31-page book and a 28-page book, so I mean, those were all pretty quick to get through. But yeah, I've been having fun with the quests. I keep having to remind myself I need to um, finish my coursework before I do the quests, because the quests last all year. And then for Karasu... Uh, he is trying to be a god seer, and for that one, he had to take um, seven classes as well and has finished three of them. There's still uh, four more to go. Uh, two of them I have started already, so Midnight Tides is one of them, and that's for demonology, and the other one is Dragon Mage, and that's for lore, and I've started both of those as well. But I'm finishing up a couple of the other ones first. And then Karasu also would like to be a scribe and for that one there's only five classes and I've already read four of the books for that I just have the Dragon Reborn by uh, Robert Jordan left to read for that one so I'm hoping I can get to all of those um, I have also done three quests for Karasu and those ones were all fairly short as well um, one under 200 pages and the other two both under 100 pages so it's been fun so I'm getting there um, here's all the, the quests very fun. And then Ramathon, I've been working on adding all of my books to the teams for defending and attacking. Again, I'm Team Enya. And I've been doing pretty good. I did have a big oops for one of the books that I submitted. I didn't see my notes for the attacking prompts and just the defending prompts. And the defending prompts it ended up being like six points or something like that where the attacking prompts would have been 19 and I had submitted it before I found that. I was like, oh man, but you live and learn, always double check things before you submit them, right? <laughs> so yeah, I am also uh, doing a weekly challenge this week to do some watercoloring. And I have the Windsor and Newton, I think it's the Koi watercolor palette um, that I've been using, which is kind of fun. Oh, I think my dog just saw my might start to get loud in here. And I did the first step of it yesterday. So I'm doing like a little watercolor galaxy and it's got like the little stars in there. And I think today I'm adding a moon and some other things to it. So this is with um, Vanessa Paints and I will leave her information uh, down in the description box below because she has does some beautiful work. And it's very easy to follow what she does as well. So very excited to continue on with that. I will work on that later today and I will try and film it. out to spend a little bit of time out in the beautiful morning. The birds and the wind in the trees, oh it's been so nice. Next up is some breakfast. 
some yogurt and granola. So every morning I have these cards up on my desk. I have kind of some affirmations and some quotes, or these are more like actions and affirmations, intentions, and quotes in this pile. I have quite a few. And there's different ways I've pulled them. Sometimes I just put the card back in the next day. Other times I set it off to the side and then once I've gone through all the cards, I go through them again, put them all back in. But my action for today is today is a day of planning. And then I do kind of put the definition on the back um, just in case I'm like, hmm, what really does that mean? With, I mean, planning's fairly obvious, but some of the other ones, um, it depends on how you want to take it. So I have um, like courage, some of the other ones, clarity. So it could be clarity of mind, clarity of intentions, clarity of action steps, um, organizing, that's a good one, action, productivity, which um, I think Walter came over and put his head in my lap when I was doing those. And yeah, <laughs> I kind of smeared it a bit. Uh, today I will show up. These are all kind of like action steps. Today is a day of dedication. So yeah, so those are fun. I like those. Some of them are today is a day of, and some is today I will. And then my quote for today comes from Ryan Holiday and his uh, Daily Stoic emails. And it's traits of discipline predict the kind of actions we will see. Discipline is destiny. So I have not read that book yet, um, but I do have it as an ebook and I would like to read that one soon. Yeah, I love uh, the Daily Stoic stuff. I'm not always great at following the advice, but I do try. All right, so it's Saturday now. I kind of missed updating the last couple days. So Thursday I had a um, handbell rehearsal uh, unexpectedly, so that was kind of nice. I, I just sub right now for a handbell choir. If you don't know what handbells are, uh, you'd probably be familiar with the Hershey Kiss commercials from Christmas time. They usually have the handbells, Carol the Bells, or one of those. It's kind of fun. It's very bright in my room right now. I apologize for lighting, trying to where can I go? There we go. That's a little better, huh? <laughs> so I really wanted to come and update because I'm very excited. My library just got in Tress of the Emerald Sea and I was first on the waiting list. So I get to read the book for the first time. So I'm very excited to pick that up on Monday. Uh, what have I been doing the last couple days? Let's see. So I've been reading Master of Jinn. I am so close so close. Um, I'm about 80 such some odd percent of the way through the book on um, chapter 27. It is so good. It's just in, very intriguing and exciting. Like I, I'm invested in all of the characters. I want to know what's going to happen to them. I want to know what's going on in the story. Like it's super intriguing and just keeps me turning page by page. Love it. Alright, so everybody in the house got up and they got all noisy inside, so I came outside and I've got to put my glasses on, but that's alright. Um, so where was I? What have I been reading? Reading Master of Jin and loving it. Love all the characters, everything about it. Writing style is super easy to read, it's easy to follow, it's intriguing, and yeah, it's great. So I'm also about halfway through Midnight Tides by Stephen Erickson. That's the um, Malazan Book of the Fallen. And that one, it, I'm definitely enjoying them much more now. They're a lot less confusing. So you're following just one or two groups of people instead of like everybody all at once <laughs> trying to figure out who everybody is. Um, so I'm, I'm in, enjoying that um, as much as you enjoy a grimdark fantasy. <laughs> but yes, it's, it's intriguing and interesting. And then I'm also about 75% of the way through Quiet Thunder and oh my gosh, let me tell you, <laughs> J.P. Harker does not hold back. No character is safe. He's not afraid to just get in there and, and get something done. So it's, it's definitely interesting. I was not expecting 
this to be as dark as it is. It's not grim dark at all. It's the, it's not about like the morally gray characters and things like that. But the, there's definitely some battles that and things happening and and yeah, yeah. So we're still far following Carrion and Allard, um, which is the characters you kind of meet at the beginning. Uh, they're they're the good guys, um, and then you have the other side of the coin, I guess you could say, and that is, I'm not sure how to pronounce a lot of the words because it's just the um, ebook, but I think it's the Syrie, I think it's the other group of people, and uh, Carrion and Allard are the Katuvani. So the Syrie are the group that are coming in and trying to, um, we'll say, free the Katuvani from Gaian rule, who the Gaians are the ones that came and kind of overtook the land at some point in time and now are kind of like the rulers of the area, but the Katuvani are actually treated fairly well. There are slaves and that kind of thing too, but uh, overall they're treated really treated well. So they, they weren't necessarily asking to be saved from the Gaians. Uh, the Syria decided to kind of take it upon themselves to free them from Gaian rule. Uh, so it's been been interesting. There's there's uh, journeying, there's battles, there's there's druids, which is quite fun. They are the healers in this book, and that is always fun to have a druid in a book. Yeah, I don't want to give away a lot of spoilers, so I'm not sure how. Yeah, there's a lot of things I don't really want to that I want to talk about, but they're going to be spoilers for when you're first starting the book, and so I, I don't want to get into that, but. Yeah, so Carrion uh, is basically kind of on a ranch, uh, farm type of ranch kind of thing and with her sister uh, Lydian and her father uh, Berwyn and their, her mom is not around anymore. There's uh, some of the characters that help to work the fields and keep the farm ranch running and that is Allard is there and then we also have Kenton. So Carrion is learning to be basically kind of the bookkeeper for the family ranch, uh, helping to sell, sell the grain that they farm as well as keeping the books for it, um, working with the, the buyers as well as keeping track of how much was sold, how much was um, produced, all of that. So she's in training to kind of take over the books of the in the family. And Lydian is the older sister and she basically just wants to uh, get married and have fun. She has no interest in any of the business side of things. Uh, they complement each other well though. Uh, Lydian likes to uh, spin the wool so that they can make clothes because of course she loves clothes. Where Carrion just thinks it's the worst punishment ever to have to spin the wool, and where Lydian thinks it's the worst punishment ever to have to do the book. So it's nice that everyone has the, the jobs that they like and they're all different, so everything gets done. Aurelia is the, kind of the tutor and trainer for the girls, kind of a substitute mom, so to speak, uh, and her son is Allard. It's a good book. It's a very interesting story. I am very invested in the characters, not only the good guys, but also the bad guys. So that's one of the things I really appreciate about this book is you don't on only get the, the good guys perspective, but you get, get to see the point of view from the antagonist's side. So you get to when you're in their point of view, they almost seem like they're the protagonist, but in reality, they're the antagonist. So it's it's I really appreciate that that point of view and, and that style of writing. So yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, *Quiet Thunder* by J.P. Harker. I'll leave the link down below for that book, and I will let you know my final thoughts when I finish it. Oh, and it looks like Walter's coming out to join me, and I also have to show you. So. Say hi Walter. Say hi Walter. <laughs> but we also, when we moved back up here, 
we made sure to bring some, oh, that sun is bright. That made sure to bring some of our aloe with us, so I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's doing really well, and I will probably have to transport, transport, transplant it into a couple of different pots because it's it's going crazy it's super happy i missed our our aloe vera jungle at our last house it was amazing but i love how thick and wide these are and then we're we got some cuttings for some bamboo that we hope to plant in our yard as well so that is bad lighting there we go so that is my update for my vlog this week and got one more day before I kind of wrap it up and get it out to y'all. So I will see you in a bit. All right, realized I hadn't wrapped this up yet. Uh, today was a really busy day, so I had food prep for Walter and uh, shopping and errands and all of that fun stuff. And then uh, realized, started eating lunch, realized, oh, I have a dentist appointment in like half an hour or so. I ate a few bites of my lunch, brushed my teeth, flossed, and then went to the dentist. Then we got back and had to uh, start some food prep for tomorrow because I ha possibly have jury duty tomorrow. I have to call. T I had to call tonight to find out if I have to report for jury, du jury duty tomorrow. I did call and it was canceled for my group for tomorrow, which I'm not sad about. Like I, it's not that I don't want to do jury duty, but there's a lot of stuff going on this week and it would just make everything a lot easier if I am home <laughs> and, and working and all of that fun stuff. So I don't have a jury duty, duty tomorrow, but instead I do have a, an extra handbell rehearsal, which will be fun. But anyway, you guys don't care about any of that kind of stuff. You're here for the books, right? Let's see. I finished Midnight Tides by Stephen Erickson and that one was really good. I really enjoyed so some of the books it's you follow so many people it's hard to really get invested in any of them or you're just trying to keep them all straight and like wait is this one of these people is it one of these people and you have variations of people you have the tist andor and the tist something else but they're not necessarily the same thing so yeah it can get a little confusing but midnight tides i feel like the majority of the book you're following the same people so you're in the same area and you're following this little group and this little group and the two groups interact with each other and I just felt like it was a lot more cohesive and a little bit easier to understand what was going on so it was it was a lot more enjoyable you got to just kind of sit back and read instead of being like okay I need to be hyper focused and pay attention to every everything so that was nice um let's see what else did I finish let me get my reading journal hold that thought Who finished Master of Gin? Love that book. And the ending was like mwah, perfection. Like just the the very end of that epilogue, like that last page, the oh I loved it. I just thought that was the perfect way to end that book. So good. I also finished Quiet Thunder. That book was good. Like JB Harker ain't holding nothing back and no one is safe anything can happen to anybody but it's nice because it kind of it starts kind of slow introduces you to some characters gives you some information around them where they're from who they are and then it kind of moves into starting their journey and then you have battles and you have growth and you have finding yourself and just it was really good I, I really, I, I feel like the whole thing wrapped up really nicely, just like the the whole book felt cohesive together. There was no weird stray random here, random there. It was, it was, it was really good. Really good. I'll give you more thoughts on that during my wrap up, but yeah, I really enjoyed that one. And I'm so excited. So this is my TBR for the month and I have finished everything but one book, but I started that one. I'm already like 60% of the way through, so... I will finish that one tomorrow. Maybe not as quickly as if I had jury duty because I, I think I've, this is the sixth or seventh time I've been called for jury duty in different cities in Arizona, <laughs> depending on where I was living at the time. And I usually sit there for three hours and get to just sit and read 
uh, and maybe get some have to answer a couple questionnaires and then I get to go home um, except for the last one I was at I had to I got called back twice and then they dismissed me but so I may not get as much reading time in as I was would have but I get a whole lot of life stuff done instead um, let's see what else was I reading oh wolf spirit I started that one. That one's just a quick little like 34 page um, short story that goes along with another series, the Priests of Titan series. And it was really good. It was very short, but it's supposed to be. It's a short story. It's just like one little snippet and it was really good. Um, Master of Jin again, Quiet Thunder. I still have two more books for Ariel for a magical readathon to finish. I did. I, I read Guards Guards because I had a couple of Midnight Tides and Quiet Thunder, which were both pretty dark and kind of heavy and so it was nice to have something fun and humorous to freshen the mind and as a palate cleanser before I get into my next books. Um, let's see. I have Of Dawn and Embers and The Exile still to read. Those are both under 200 pages. Um, I need to finish Dragon Mage which is 986 pages. I'm about a little over 100 pages into that, 150 pages in. I probably won't finish it, but I will get another 100 or so pages in on that one before the end of the month. And I did start The Dragon Reborn today since I finished Guards Guards, and I'm enjoy I'm really enjoying this one. I'm, I'm enjoying the perspectives that we're getting. It's maybe a spoiler if you haven't read The Dragon Reborn, maybe fast forward a few seconds. I'll try to remember to put a little spoiler thing up here and then when it's done but it's nice because it's it's not Rand's perspective yes finally <laughs> we don't have to be in Rand's mind the whole time so so far I'm just like five six chapters in or something but we're getting a lot from Perrin's perspective which is amazing I love it because I really like his character and spoilers you can come back now uh and that's about it okay so I have what, like four books I still need to read for the Magical Readathon and one for my TBR. So I should finish most of those. Dragon Mage is the only one I probably won't finish, but I might be able to switch that with a different one. I did just pick up, should be a little more organized. I am an organized person normally, but I did just pick up from my library, Trust of the Emerald Sea. So if this has a map in it, oh, so pretty. Look at that, this little teacup. Oh. So nice. And I'm the first one that's borrowed this from the library, so that's exciting. So pretty. Look at that. And I've heard some really good things, but it doesn't look like it has a map. I need a book with a map. Um, and also, my library as an audiobook got um, the second secret project in, so I can borrow that one. That one's a nine hour audiobook, I think. So I'll see if I can fit one of those into one of the prompts that has a much bigger book right now but we'll see anyway I'm all over the place and all scatterbrained it's been it's been a very busy day <laughs> going back and forth and all around so I am going to make dinner sit down play with my dog maybe watch oh we're in the middle of Picard season three uh we're three episodes in to third season so we're gonna watch that tonight so that'll be nice so yeah, thank you so much for joining me for my Magical Readathon vlog and journey. Uh, I have one, one week left. We'll see how it goes. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me. And I will catch you next time. Bye.